Good morning, everyone. My name is Nico. And I am Pizza. We will be your host for today's webinar. So before we, be before we begin, if any of you have any questions regarding the discussion for today, don't hesitate to send them to us by entering it in the comment section of whatever social media platform that you are watching this on. And Pizza and I will be here to relate them to our guest speakers for today. So everyone, welcome to the live webinar series of SB.ph, an e-learning marketplace for Filipino professionals where one can develop relevant and in-demand skills through master classes in different fields of learning. If you want to learn more about us, feel free to visit our website at www.esme.ph. For those who are watching on Facebook and YouTube, feel free to share the link to the stream to the people who you think who will be interested in today's topic. Yes, we are inviting everyone to join us in our live learning series where seasoned experts such as our speakers for today in various fields from agriculture and business to marketing to futures thinking to relationships to health and fitness and more help you develop your skills in advance both in your personal life and in your career. If you're interested in learning more about the live learning series, head on over to our website again to www.sma.ph and click on the live learning tab. We hope you can join us. So I hope that everyone is doing well today. Um, so everyone is wondering what the topic is. So you can see from above. Our topic today <laughs> is about empowering communication using brain science to influence, to influence and motivate others. So communication works for those who work at it, said John Powell. So communication is one of the vital elements for human survival. Without it, we wouldn't evolve and adapt. It can be used to enhance your own capabilities or empower that of others. So effective communication is the key to running a business, discovering friendships, and building communities. So that is what we are going to talk about today. So Pizza, yes. mm -hmm. go ahead and introduce our speakers. <laughs> Yes, okay, I'm going to introduce our speakers. Our guest speakers for today are our very lovely couple and are also the founders of Train Station Philippines, Mr. R.R. Herrera and Mrs. Karel Herrera. Besides being the co-founder and CEO of Train Station and Brainstrong Initiative, alongside Mr. Herrera, Mrs. Karel Herrera is also the pioneer of neuro-linguistic programming in the Philippines and certifies NLP practitioners globally. On the other hand, Mr. R.R. Herrera is the chief strategist of Train Station and is also a master practitioner, life coach, and is certified in the new code of NLP by Dr. John Grinder, the founder of NLP himself. Okay, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our speakers, Mr. and Mrs. R.R. and Karel Herrera. Hello, Hi. hello, amazing. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Good morning po. Hello. I want to give a shout out immediately to the people who sent their comments. Hello, April Rose, Gustilo Cerezo, <laughs> and Mary Joyce Candino. Hello Good from, morning. from Capi State University, si April Rose. And hello, Mary Joyce. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, we've been very excited. Ilang months na rin to, no? Uh, we've been preparing. <laughs> yes, <Mary>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and finally, we're here. So thank you, Esme. Yes. yes. Really thank you, then, Paul, yes. for Thank you, then, Paul. We're so honored us. to have you here. Yes, Paul. We're, we're so, very excited to share with people already what we know. So anything that you'd want us to uh, uh, address before we go on? So I would, before we continue, Paul, we would like to ask mm -hmm. if you had breakfast na po. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Breakfast of champions, water. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're on uh, intermittent fasting and we only eat once a day. So, yeah, yes. so we were and talking I've lost, about that. I've lost how many pounds already? I've lost 15 pounds already in two months. So, about 14. 15. Oh. Wow. Gabe, <laughs> and sobra energetic nyo po. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> ano ba? Energetic ba? Hindi po masyado halang. 
<laughs> Pasensya na po sa viewers. Ganito po talaga kami mga yep. asawa. So, this is our home. And even our with our two children, we're, we're this energetic. Our kids, of course, are not on intermittent fasting. They're eating bacon. So. <laughs> <laughs> Parang tayo yung children. Yeah, they're eating children nila. Kumakain tayo. Parang po talaga yun. <laughs> So, kami po yung kumakain ng bacon. <laughs> bacon, pizza. Yes, pizza. Oh, yes. Ang pinaglihi sa pizza. <laughs> yes. So, uh, let's move on na po. Uh, so, let's do your presentation na po, Miss okay. Okay. So I'm sure everyone here is excited and we are excited as well. We hope to be joined by more people online and i'm sure that a lot of people will be watching this as well eventually you know um i know that this is evergreen naman eh, that these things are already on the facebook of esme and um we're sharing it also in train station so hi to the people of train station uh we're glad that you are here to support us as well and to all our clients and all our friends we're excited to share with you uh the topic for today is empowering communication i mean there's always communication right yeah. but it how can you make your communication empowering that every interaction that you have with people has a purpose to inspire heal you know um ignite re-energize refuel wouldn't it wouldn't that be great instead of communication being hurtful deceitful Diba? Or impactless. Or impactless. Right? Or uh, a lot of people lang. are communicating and, you know, there's so much. They don't realize that there's so much more that they can do to have more impact in their communication. Yes. Because we communicate every day, every moment. And even if we don't say anything, we are communicating. So communication is very important. And especially now, no? Especially now during this time that everybody's on lockdown, everybody's online, um, a lot of people are having that challenge in communicating differently because mm -hmm. we're so used to communicating face to face and now things are different right? things are um, yes. especially yep. now that people feel a lot of the isolation because we are separated from each other that we don't get to see our families we don't get to talk to the people that we work with every day i mean there's social distancing there's all of these virtual meetings so you know, there's a different layer to communication. Although right now, I would probably ask the audience, if you can, please type on the comment box uh, or in the comment section, wherever you're watching right now, if you're watching um, on YouTube or on Facebook, please type, you know, what are the usual challenges? I could ask probably Nico as well. And uh, pizza. pizza, what are the challenges that you have in communication? And just chat that um with us so that we uh, we could answer and uh, help you out with these concerns. Yes. Um, with this session, Karel and I would want it to be as interactive as possible. So I, I, we understand that you're working from home, you're doing chores at home, you can probably be ironing your clothes or eating breakfast while listening to us, and it would be good to talk to you and communicate uh, with you as well. So if yes. you have any questions or ano ba yung mga... We want to get your insights. What were what are the problems or challenges you have in communication? Well, off bat, while other people are probably chatting away or typing, you know, I think um, so many problems are happening when it comes to communication. Miscommunication is a very common problem. Yep. Right? I mean, even with the two of us, we love each other so much. Yeah, we we are married, we're we're parents. Uh, to ch two children, but the way we communicate is so different. Well, I mean, even we, the way we communicate to our kids, it's different. very different. It's very different, <laughs> right? Um, and it's probably because of also how we were both raised. Hello, Paul from Camarines Sur. Hello, Cam Sur. Yes, hello, Romel. Yes, hello, Romel. So anyone here who would have a challenge in communication, it's probably that. You know, having miscommunication, not understanding someone, different communication styles. Not understanding, that's one, you know. And another uh, angle to that is really like giving your best, pero iba yung, is iba yung that, dating. Oh, iba yung iba dating, yung dating. So, mm -mm. do natin makikita later, also, we'll also discuss that, that words, mm -mm. Uh, how is that taken differently even if by intention at it yeah and even if for example we have here a, a teacher i suppose april rose um, from Kapi state university um if you are communicating as a teacher if you're communicating as a leader or as a boss you prepare for your communication 
right? You do. And then it is so frustrating that even if you are so well prepared with it, why doesn't it have that same impact? Why doesn't it connect? Now, if we're going to just refer to these challenges that we have day to day, I mean, language barrier is one. Cultural uh, Difference. differences is another one. We have uh, upbringing. upbringing, different levels, like the, the older generation speaking differently than the younger generation. I don't know. I thought I think the younger generation now they have different words, and it's so different for me to try to understand <laughs> some of these terminologies. You know, they just just say G or I don't know what terms. Uh, boomer, Carbs. yeah. And what? What's boomer? That? What's a boomer? Uh, that's what they call yung mga baby boomers. So. Oh, okay. So <laughs> yeah. So medyo luma na rin yun. I don't know the new stuff right now. But. So the old and the new. There's already that disparity. There's already that that big gap. Yeah. So how do you now connect? And I think if you let me just show you our PowerPoint presentation. But if you refer to what Oprah Winfrey would always say, can you? Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, share with everybody. Oprah Winfrey is one of my most favorite speakers. And she always says this, you know, great communication begins with connection. You need to connect it, right? Um, again, communication isn't really communication for me. It's a one-way thing if there is no connection. Parang ano yan eh, you know those um, mga salespeople na nasa department store, yung merong mic dito. Yeah. <laughs> salita ka lang na salita, pero you don't know if the other person is listening or if it's being received by other people or yung mga shoppers dyan. So it's important for you to connect, to be able to communicate something. Well, Ma'am, sir, madali lang po yan. Isa po, kasalagay pa rin lagi po natin sa ating plan siya, tapos madali lang. <laughs> Ewan ka gano'n, di ba? So parang yung communication ba na yun, does it connect? Sometimes you're just speaking and you don't know if it is making any connection at all. So, what is that connection? Not just How internet do we connect? Con and not just internet connection. Ah, as people <laughs> would say, mahina po kasi yung Wi-Fi namin kaya walang connection. But even that, no, that is needed. A an avenue, a platform, an avenue and a platform to connect. So whether it is online, whether it is virtually that we try to connect, whether it's just a comment on Facebook, whether it is liking somebody, there is an avenue to connect with somebody now connection does not necessarily mean just words or you know um hearing somebody it could be looking at somebody it could be touching somebody sometimes my husband and i we connect just by watching our favorite k-dramas and you know holding hands while we're watching tv that is still a connection so with yes. with the job that we have no we talk every day uh, eight hours a day but the last thing we need is to talk again. So to be able to connect, well, sometimes what we do is really just look at each other and there is communication there. There is that connection there and that is enough for us. Now, next slide, please. If we're going to talk about creating that connection, we want to go to the brain. Yeah. Why, why the brain? Okay, because the brain is the seat of everything, of all our emotions, our decisions, our actions, our motivations. It is in there it is seated there the processes of the brain that is um the one that guides our words like when the part of the brain that is in charge of words like the temporal lobes when it is impaired the person cannot speak the person could not put together their language if i don't have my you know occipital part of my brain oh or the my gosh. <laughs> nosebleed Nose or the visual da. part Aga. of my brain not <laughs> activated right I, I would not be able to see there is a sensory cortex in our brain and all of these um senses that we have to receive communication if that is impaired we cannot receive it and we also cannot communicate um now there are parts of the brain that are in charge of interest and um curiosity the brain's natural um uh, function is to be curious. Like if you look at cats, we just got a cat, kasi. So, but if you look at cats, they're just naturally curious. Even a dog, any animal, they're curious. What is this? They try to smell it. They try to touch it. They try to make sense of something because of their senses. So do we human beings. We do that. We try to see: Do I know this person? Do I like this person? Can I relate with this person? Kumo connect ba siya sa akin? That's what the brain is trying to figure out. So how do we connect 
with the brains of other people. It is. And it happens with love, no? Like even in dating, palang sometimes. Bakit ganon? Um, she's attractive. We converse well, pero parang walang connection. Is it also in the brain? That is also in the brain. That's also Definitely in the brain. Definitely in the brain. In high school, my uh, biology teacher said, "Love not with your heart, but with your hypothalamus." Yeah. <laughs> diba? Tama exactly. Bayon? Exactly. Tama bayon. And there's a movie like that, right? I love you with my. Hypothalamus, but some, some some movie like that, but it is really a brain function. Now, um, our brain uh, communicates with our entire body. That's why we feel excited because the brain processes something that it is interesting. Our heart starts to beat fast. Our hands get cold because we're excited. Our feet start to get cold. So our brain communicates with our entire body, making us understand. Hey, I like this. Or you get sleepy, or you start to get distracted because your brain says, "Not important, not important to me." Right? So, hello to Mashe. Yes, from Ma uh, Maayong Buntag. Yes, from Talisay. Hello, hello, Maayong Buntag. And um, if we're going to go into connecting with the brains of people, next slide, please. Let's understand what is happening to your brain. We're talking about the brain science right here and how do we influence people more. The brain is a computing machine. It's like a computer. Now, you understand Facebook, right? Um, there are algorithms there. There are uh, things that you will input and the and Facebook knows your the likes. <laughs> Facebook knows your dislikes. Facebook knows what you follow. So all of these things are computed into the algorithm of Facebook. Uh, now, to understand it better, if you're going to type something on your Word document or into your PowerPoint um, file, then it gets processed. Whatever you put in gets processed. Whatever is received by your brain, depending on its, let's say, processor cap capability, speed, that's how it will compute the information. So there are people now, oi, ang bilis niya. We have one of our trainers in train station who's very quick because he's a comedian. So anything that you just pass on to him, boom, may may punchline na agad siya. Because his brain has been trained to compute faster when it comes to jokes. Like this guy, my husband, yep. he's so strategic, he's so brilliant that you know he just sees something and his brain computes it immediately. You know, parang agad agad grabe si RR kung makapunchline. Ibang klaseng makapunchline siya because his brain has been trained to compute quickly. Now, next slide, please. Can you um, elaborate or I mean just read this? The what brain is a pattern recognizer. Right. Um, what does that mean when the brain is a pattern recognizer? It recognizes patterns. Like, how do you know that one thing is a chair? And then the next thing is a chair. And then the next thing is a chair. Pattern, design yan. Oh, Even if it has different designs, you still know it's a chair. Right, right. Or how do you know that that's a woman? How do you know that's a man? How do you know our gender? How do you know that that is a child because of the patterns that we have? How does your brain know that you like the speaker? There's a pattern that you like. Like when you listen to somebody and say, Oi, I like the sound of that. Why? Because they sound like a radio announcer. They sound like, you know, a DJ or they sound like a someone you like. Yeah, someone <laughs> they sound like someone you like. So the brain is recognizing that pattern. Now, what what else does this say? For example, my husband and I, he knows my pattern. He knows how I am, how bubbly I am. So when I am quiet, the, he knows that there is an off pattern. He says, are you okay? He asks that. Yep. All the time. Because wala sa pattern ko yung pagiging... Yung behavior niya. Yung behavior. Mm -hmm. So when the brain identifies a deviation to the pattern, it starts to question or it starts to worry or panic. It's alerted. Or threatened. Yep. It can get threatened. So when a person does not like you, it's probably because you are in the pattern of people that they don't like. Or maybe they are used to a certain pattern or a certain type of person that they talk to that they feel comfortable with, and you are not in that pattern. So that is how the brain is when it comes to communication. That's why we have certain words because our brain recognizes that pattern of communication. Bakit alam natin ang subject-verb agreement? Again, pattern recognizer. So 
let's move on to the next slide. Um, I'm very geeky about this, guys, so I apologize for this. Now, when something is familiar, your brain recognizes that and they feel safe with it. Like RR and I, what was the thing that you recognized with me that made you so comfortable with me? It was like talking to myself. Uh, I love you. <laughs> and a lot of people say this. A lot of uh, our friends say this. Parang, alam mo, ikaw yung lalaking karele, right? <laughs> and that was a sign for me na parang I did not have to adjust that much. Diba? And I think that's the reason why uh, it works uh, yeah. for the both of us. Because, you know, if you if you imagine, you know, if you keep on adjusting every time or putting in that effort just to be able to be understood and to be able to connect with each other, it's hard. Especially with someone that you live with 24-7, exactly. right? So, yeah. although, although sometimes it's a given, eh? you're married to somebody or you are with someone who is so different from you. And that's why we never fought. The, the, the funny thing is, a lot of people think that we're very different but um, at a certain level, you guys are so alike as well. Yeah, we're right? so alike. So, but as I was saying, we never fought until we had children. Until we had kids, yes. Because when <laughs> we had our children, our children have a different way of communicating. Yeah, okay. So I think this is how I take it, uh, receive it. No? Parang, okay, we're so alike, but as parents, we're not that alike. Because you were uh, brought up in a certain way, I was brought up in a different way, yeah. and that's where the clash comes from. Yeah, and plus, our we are used to talking to adults. We're used to talking to people yep. who process information. We're talking to children, right? So there is a different patience, level of patience. And there's a different level of skill for you to communicate with a kid because they have different patterns they they only see things as you know threat or reward that's how they see things so how do we train the brain now because our brains are trained we learned it he learned how he communicated he was a child actor for so many years i'm also a child actor for so many years we were trained in different eras different methodologies we are also in theater so we we were formed by that that's why ganito kalakas yung bosses namin no wonder our son <laughs> speaks in a modulated voice mom dad i'm <laughs> very modulated because his and brain be like, got um, trained it's just us it's just us in their voice yes we don't have to be on stage right now <laughs> so the brain is trained and it is trainable so when it comes to communication when you say Hindi ako ganun kagaling mag-communicate eh. Hindi, hindi naman ganun yung experience ko. Well, great news is you can train it. You can devote hours to hone the skill in communication. Even the two of us in this marriage, we had to hone our skills in communicating with each Still, other. Still, even if we were already connecting and even if we were already so much alike, we still had to learn. And even if we are experts already at communication. But, you know, Karel, the funny thing is, um, I always believe, like, when you were born, you were very, we were born very great communicators. Diba? Because we were very flexible. Now, this is very interesting. Because he said the, the term born communicators. You know, no, because for me, it's really our exposure. It's really our exposure. What you were born into parents who can communicate. You were born into a family that, you know, um, okay, has when that you, resource. When you were born, hindi pa. But as a kid. No one was born, hello everybody, the sun revolves around, <laughs> and the earth revolves around the sun. Wala pong ganun pinanganak. Wala Baby yung, genius. Haba umiiyak. Oh, ha! Wala na naman. Wala Sorry, but um, when we talk about... Siguro uh, not born, but maybe as kids. Being, communicating differently. Yeah, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Being yes. flexible with your communication. Yes. Adjusting every yes. time. Well, there is also such a thing as yung mga child prodigies, that there is a part of their brain that is more enhanced, therefore more receptive to receiving information, um, more... You know, more brilliant, more savant pa nga yung iba, eh, diba? So that one, based on the studies um, on science, on, on, on psychology as well, was that these savants or these geniuses, that even if they were born gifted, that gift still has to get honed. Sure. You still have to hone it. Now, even if you were not born gifted, you can still hone it. 
you can still hone it. So um, that's what I've always believed in, especially when it comes to communication. So the point really is the brain is uh, very malleable. Malleable. Or, uh, can be trained absolutely can be very flexible if you want to learn something if you want to communicate better by the end absolutely so jethro saying nice interactive presentation thank you you can interact further yes, by jethro. telling us what you think or you have your comments or you have your questions about communication and the brain we're here so next slide please if the brain is trained and trainable did you know that the brain is easily distracted it's so easily distracted. <laughs> and you know this, because I have ADHD, guys. I have been diagnosed. Hello, Ganzo! Oh, my God! Maayang buntag, Ganzo! Oh, my goodness. Hello, hello. So, if we're going to talk about the brain... I see. The brain is easily distracted. <laughs> I am going by talking that. Ganzo! Okay. Right. Case but, in point? <laughs> eight, yes. This is my ADHD, and my husband always say, says to me, Ooh, squirrels! squirrels. <laughs> Hi, Kuya Ian. Kuya Ian's watching as well. Hello, Hi. Ian. So we are distracted. Like, try praying. In the middle of prayer, all of a sudden, you're thinking of your laundry, you're thinking of what to cook. While working, all of a sudden, you start your mind starts to wander. And I was just interviewed recently by Bianca Gonzalez, mm -hmm. right? And uh, Bianca, so, paano ba to? Paano ba to? Hashtag paano ba to? You can watch it on YouTube. And we were talking about, why do we overthink? Well, because that's the brain's job to think. And when we start wondering, when the person you're talking to starts to not pay attention to you, it's because they're distracted. Yeah, they are. Like my husband is already looking at his I'm cell phone. I'm looking at the, uh, the, at comments, the comments on Facebook. Of people. But <laughs> there is a distraction. Why? Okay, please click on the next slide. Please. Why are we easily distracted? Because the brain selects what it focuses on. That is the training of the brain. So like when you go into a room, you enter a room, your brain selects already people that you would want to go to. Pattern recognizer, people that you're familiar with, people you feel safe with. So it focuses on that. Now, if I'm having a conversation with my husband, my brain is easily distracted as my kids start to communicate with me. <laughs> they go, mom, mom, e dalawa yun. Mami, mami. <laughs> And I, I, I experienced that because um, uh, does her work here no? in the bedroom and I work outside and I face my laptop tapos merong, daddy, can you do this? Daddy, that's me. Ang hirap mag-concentrate. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I put on um, my headphones, headphones para yeah. naka ako. Tsaka meron akong deep focus na music. Right. And, and the thing with that is because my kids are important to me, I look right? Your brain will, as a mother, I think that's a mother's instinct that even if it is not so important and they're just going to say, mom, look at me chew. <laughs> <laughs> mom, look at me chew my food. I look because my brain knows that they're important to me and my paying attention to them, me looking at them is important to them. So the brain selects what it focuses on. It can choose to focus on the positive and can also choose to focus on the negative. Now, if you choose to focus on the negative, what happens to your communication? What is wrong about something? And if you look at a certain picture, you can look at what's wrong. You can look at me and RR and tell us what's wrong with us. You'll find something wrong. But if you start to think what is right, what can be right, what is good about this, then you will find it. So that's what the brain does for us. And that's why there are some people predisposed to positivity and negativity because your brain has been trained. So para when people say to me, ang nega-nega niya po, ma'am. Eh, na-train po siguro yung brain niya na maging nega. So the hope for the future is that you can train also yourself to be more positive, if, especially when needed. And creating a better impact. Now, next slide, please. Um, so how do we do this? How do we help? Uh, next slide. How do we help people in their brain select more important stimuli? I mean, if I go on stage and if I speak in front of people, I want to be selected as that important stimuli, a stimulus rather, right? I, so in an information that you send in an email, gusto mo maging important yon for people to pay attention to it. When my husband calls me, I know that that's important stimuli, stimulus or depending on his voice, right? Gano ka importante yung information na yun. Like, Bob, ah, yes. Yeah. So the brain now gets alerted because it is important. 
Now, all of these things that I'm saying right now, can you click on the next slide, please? I can probably fast track this part. We have different parts of our brain and this affects our language and how we respond. Maybe to talk about NLP further, RR, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so this is the NLP part and this is something I'm very passionate about. Uh, I've been uh, training this for years now and I have never found um, any discipline that can um, have this uh, impact. Uh, as much as NLP. Um, excited, excited. Ako. Okay, let's break it down. When you say neuro linguistic programming, medyo no speed, right? So, but ako doon dito pala yung camera natin. So, anyway, <laughs> neuro linguistic programming, it can be uh, very high highfalutin. So, let's break it down. When we say neuro, it means, of course, the brain. And that's um, what Karel was discussing a while ago, no? So, everything we do, when we say, uh, we think, it happens in the brain. And even before we speak, a lot of people um, often think no, na parang when we say communication, it's just to, uh, outwards. Mm -hmm. But what we need to understand also is there is communication that happens internally. Sa neuro part pa lang, na tayo, pag inisip pa lang natin, that's actually communication the way we talk to ourselves. Right? So when we think of something or the way we, um, kunwari, sa asawa nga lang eh, Right? A lot of people do this. Na pag gising sa umaga, nakita yung asawa nila parang, hmm, salot sa buhay ko to. Or, you know what? Uh, this person is making my life difficult. Right? If that is what you put in your brain, I wonder how that will affect your day. Right? I'm pretty sure that the whole day, medyo bad trip na yun. Whatever they do, whatever your spouse does, um, Mag-serve man yan ng pagkain, you will still ne take it negatively. Magbigay yeah. ng flower yan, oh, what did you do? Right? <laughs> or yung nakangiti, pero, uh, oo, oo naman. Pero kasi in their head, they're thinking, ay, just ko, ano na naman tong kakulitan na to. On Facebook, also. Minsan pa, nag-like yan or nag-love yan, mm, tinan mo, plastic yan. <laughs> Di ba? Akita mo? So, neuro part pa lang, there is communication already happening. Mm -hmm. And... That is very important. Now, let's go to the linguistic part. Linguistic is also very important because the thoughts are also translated to words or labels in our brain. And the way we uh, uh, transform that or the labels that we use to be able to have meaning to the thoughts that we have, that's also important because mm -hmm. sometimes we label things na hindi naman talaga yun yung um, angkop. Right? Because it's, it's based on our experience. So our labels are subjective. Yeah. I remember this story that you had that you were coaching someone uh, for public speaking. May I sit lang? Yeah. It's, it's for, fu for public, public, for <laughs> public speaking. And the, the client goes, you know what? I'm, 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 natatakot ako when I present. I'm nervous when I present in front of uh, a lot of people. So Karel was like, okay, so what do you do? Ano ba nangyayari? How is it manifested in your body when you speak in front of a lot of people? So, um, I get chills, nalalamig ako, tapos parang nag-churn yung chan ko. Ah, okay, so what do you... Gumakabog yung dibdib ko. Gumakabog yung dibdib ko. So Karel was like, okay, so what do you want to feel whenever you uh, present, whenever you present to an audience? Sabi niya, ah, gusto ko, uh, I want to feel excited. I want to feel uh, empowered. Okay, so when you feel excited or empowered, any manifestation on what do you feel in your body? Sabi niya, um, parang yung, there's something in my stomach na umiiko, tapos yung chest ko parang kumakabog na ganyan, tapos nalalamig ako. Oh, okay. So pareho lang pala yung manifestations no, of being excited and being nervous. So sometimes, because of the manifestations being the same, we label it as nervousness even if you are excited. Or sometimes, then label natin na excited ka kung talaga naman pala is you are feeling nervous, mm -hmm. right? So the labels that we use or the linguistic part is also very important. Mm -hmm. And programming. We are programmed, and we program other people as well when we communicate. Just last night, a friend of ours um, messaged us na parang, um, how do I get over that fear of conflict? So Karel and I were discussing, and I'm like, um, it's also because of how that person uh, thought or thinks of, pro, uh, thinks of um, conflict. Right? Mm -hmm. Kung paano siya pinalaki na ang conflict, uh, laging madugo, laging may away. Mm -hmm. But 
Wala yeah. pa siguro siyang input that conflict can also be discussed peacefully. And interesting enough, kasi yung fear of conflict niya, sabi ko, may tanong ako sa'yo, kasi itong conflict na to, na fear of conflict ba dahil doon sa ka-conflict mo or doon sa conflict? Mm-hmm. So in NLP, we try to break things down. Is it because of the person you're having a conflict with that you have a fear of? Because it could be that. Wala Pwedeng ka, na doon yung programming oh, part, right? Wala ka namang fear sa conflict. Kasi mm-hmm. kaya mo makipag-away kahit kanino, katrabaho, kaibigan, pero not with this person because this person is important. Or do you fear conflict or and conflict itself or the issue itself? And this person said, no, kasi whenever this person and I, the person I love, my wife and I fight, I remember how my ex and I used to fight. Iyon naman, na programa naman siya. <laughs> so sabi niya, ibang-iba yung wife ko dun sa ex ko. But I am so traumatized with my ex that the way that I deal with my wife, even if she's different, is the same fear I had with my ex. So isn't that funny? Okay, so may question tayo uh, from Tess Jim. So how si Ganzo do we... Yan, si Ganzo. Hi, Ganzo. So how do we unlearn what we were taught since. It is a process. I always tell people that it is not a band-aid solution. That Okay, you've learned this for years. You've learned this for a decade to be fearful. And then you want that there is like a, okay, a pill or a medicine that will make you well in, in that fear immediately. It is also a process. So what we are and I do, especially in our coaching, is we take people through the process. Yeah. There are many sessions that it takes months even for someone to really find themselves again and find that healing, especially if it is traumatic. But if it is simple, if it's a simple thing, like, can I like just want to speak louder? Okay, easy. You want to speak louder? I want to be able to have that confidence on stage. Okay, sure. Probably, uh, uh, you know, through training and skills building, we can do that. Uh, yeah. Changing the motivation. It's the same thing as teaching a singer how to sing or an actor how to act. The way I know, uh, the way I see this, or I want to explain this is again, no, the brain. That's why we're discussing the brain because br- the brain is a muscle and it's very flexible. It's very like malleable, a muscle. yeah. And it's like a muscle. So again, when we exercise, if you want to build muscles, if you want a good physique, no, on palakay yung muscle nato, what do you need to do? You need to exercise that over and, and over, over and over. So, ang question dito, unlearn. You need to give yourself time also. Uh, these exercises for these exercises. Uh, the next time you feel it, can I do it differently? Yes. Okay, so yeah, I'll try to do it differently this time. And then the next time, do it differently again. And then do it differently again. And then eventually you will start to unlearn that thing that you want to change. Yeah, just like when, okay, like now I will do this in a more uh, elementary way. So, right? so, like you learn how to brush your teeth. Right? You've learned that. This is a habit. The brain is a pattern recognizer and it likes habits. So you're brushing your teeth with your right hand. You want to unlearn it? Use the other hand. Now, eventually, this one, at first it will feel awkward because you're not used to it. But eventually, you can. Just like how some people learned how to write with the left hand. Like his mom um, had a stroke and so she's paralyzed half body. She learned how to utilize her left instead of her right because of necessity. So sometimes people do not unlearn because there's no necessity. There's no need. But if you're already hurt by it, you're really um, not moving forward with it, then we suggest that you really um, train yourself to unlearn. Now, what are you usually focusing on in communication? That, that's very important for us to understand in programming. What are you programmed to look at? What are you programmed to feel? How are you programmed to feel? So when my when our friend messaged us last night, you know, sometimes it's just a, a matter of curiosity of how do I speak? How does my body respond when I'm in a conflict? How do I breathe when I'm in conflict? Can I try to breathe differently when I'm in conflict? Just that experiment. I love NLP because it teaches you experimentation and that know nothing state, that sense of curiosity. Yeah, it's awareness. Eh? But uh, okay, a lot of people are functioning that okay in this situation, this is my auto default. Yeah. Right. And what NLP does is it teaches you okay, you need to be aware of what you're doing because sometimes we are communicating differently and the other person is offended. Why were 
you like, offend, uh, why us. were you offended? I did not yeah. do anything. Exactly. But means pala yung pagkunot palang ng noo or um, the way you uh, say things, dun palang meron na kagad ikaw na offend. Mm-hmm. And sometimes or most of the time, you are not aware that you are doing these things yeah. because these are auto defaults. Yeah, and to unlearn a belief system is quite difficult. Like, for example, my husband has a loud voice, you know, and sometimes I'm, I'm listening to him. May kaaway ba siya? Wala siyang kaaway, pero lakas lang po talaga ng boses niya. So, that thing is something that he can be mindful of and he's able to adjust because um, he... It's not easy. I'm still adjusting. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's really, in NLP, it's really all about flexibility. Yeah. And it's not just one way. This is not just one way of communication. If you've been used to one way of communicating, especially with our kids, we know this because the flexibility is required with our kids. It's not just always just one way. There are many options to get to the bottom line. So let us experiment on that. So next slide, please. Medyo, very good question. Uh, pero very you, good. Thank you, Ganzo. Siyempre. Hello, watching from... Nabal, Nabal Bilinan. Bilinan. So, yes, we can move forward from this. But the way we think, think act, and speak are all programs. Yes. Like, uh, that's why we said, maayong buntag, right? I mean, we speak Bisaya. Even if I'm not Bisaya, he is partly Bisaya. Partly. Um, kasabot. kasabot. Pero diri kasulti. Right. <laughs> I, I speak also Ilocano. Because of my exposure, we will only learn of something because we were exposed to it, because we were aware of it. So um, now based on my studies on applied neurosciences, that connection that we have, we create, there are neurotransmitters in the brain. There are hair-like structures that connect one part to another. So if there is an experience, it creates that connection, it gets labeled. The more you have that experience, that the thicker that connection becomes until it becomes so strong strong that it is unforgettable. It cannot be severed. So based on that, it is true that we are programmed. So you see the natin kanina, it's like a muscle, no? Because the more you exercise that, that connection becomes stronger in your brain. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you okay. can... okay ra na. Basta importante kasabot. kasabot. Ah, lagi. Yes. Lagi. <laughs> Next slide, please. Next slide. I'm enjoying this. Yes, a lot I of know. people are interacting. I like it. I know. So, as it to break it down further, neuro is your thinking process, the way you use your senses. Like I said this a while ago, our senses really are the ways for our brain to receive the information. So, um, that is how we receive it, and then it gets processed by our brain. So, what do you see? What do you hear? Feel, taste, touch. What does it's your a bombardment? No? It's a bombardment. It's a bombardment. And dummy yeah. information. And what, like what you said a while ago, um, what's important to the brain? It differs uh, yeah. for each person. And that's why sometimes we don't feel hunger. Mm-hmm. Even if we do not eat the entire day, we only eat after 21 hours every day. We don't feel the hunger because our brain is busy. Like we're working, I'm doing something because it focuses on what is more important. Totoo yan. Uh, and let's talk about programming also. No? We, during the first few weeks, mahirap yung <laughs> fasting <laughs> namin. Na, gutom ako. Gutom. <laughs> but uh, eventually, it has programmed us not to think of food. But even if it has been a week or months already, when we start to smell like bacon, pag food ng mga kids, or when someone's cooking, or when we look at a picture of food, parang, oy, all of a sudden, nagugutom ka agad <laughs> because that's a Euro part, no? Uh-oh. Sabi ni Sir Clem Montaliana, very refreshing. Thank you. Our thinking creates our reality. That is true. Yes. That is so true. Your internal communication, your internal intrapersonal communication affects your interpersonal communication. So the neuro part when you're thinking, sabi nga ni RR kanina, just ko, salo talaga to. Ang lana siyang sinasabi, galit na naman siya, galit na naman siya. The way you talk, even if you'd say, yeah, oo, I love you, oo. <laughs> Pero in your head, galit ka. So, yes, our thinking affects the reality in our communication. Ooh! Next slide. Next slide. So the neural part. Na, emotional brain. Uh oh. Is you know the, we have different parts of the brain. So let me fast yes, forward me. here in this part. So there is an emotional part of our brain, uh, which is in the limbic system. This emotional brain actually instructs the brain stem, the insula, the hypothalamus. You know all. <sighs> <laughs> so it instructs the reptilian brain or the crocodile brain to make our heart beat fast because this is the survival part of the brain. 
it wants to run away as fast as possible from danger and it moves towards pleasure it moves towards rewards yes i have a bonus yes i have salary increase yes i'm gonna get a promotion yes this is the person i like your body moves towards that but if there's someone you don't like oh my god more job oh no mathematics oh no <laughs> mathematics. so your body moves away because of the emotional brain the emotion you feel the emotions that you feel in the limbic brain specifically like next slide specifically in this part called the amygdala click please sounds like queen amygdala this amygdala alerts the rest of the the system and if you'd see this the amygdala is very close to the hypothalamus that's what regulates your body's function the heart rate the temperature all of that so it is so close to that so sometimes there's no reason there's no reason we're just afraid. Your body feels that. So in communication, sometimes people are just so afraid to communicate. Now, you would see certain parts here, the basal ganglia, it's the reward system of the brain. You will have the thalamus, it's the gateway to the sensory experiences. The hippocampus is long-term memory. So malapit din si hippocampus with amygdala. So sometimes we see something, it un it unwrap, uh, unravels memories from your long term that makes you afraid. Just like my story, a while, our story a while ago about our friend having conflict. It's not about this present conflict that scares him, but the history of conflict that he has. So because of the location of the brain, it affects our neurology, our physiology immediately. Then sometimes, nags stutter, nags stammer tayo, at nangirapa tayo magsalita. So next slide, please. Next slide. Kaya kailangan ng water. Yes. So, and when we panic, in, you drink. When we panic, you drink water. <laughs> Break lambo. Okay. So, when you panic, of course, sometimes hindi ka makapagsalita. And there are three C's that go away when you're panicking, especially in communicating. Or let's say you're not panicking, but you're threatened with the person you're talking to. You know, the three C's. Go away. What the, what are these three C's? Cognition. When a person's afraid of you, they will not understand anything. And when my child is afraid, whatever I say, whatever I explain, my child will not understand. Whatever my husband says, if I'm angry, I don't understand. Because cognition goes away when the brain is in a threatened state. Next, creativity. They cannot think of a solution. There are so many people who cannot think of solutions because they lose that creativity in a threatened state. When the brain is in a threatened state, I cannot, kahit in front na sa akin yung solution, hindi ko pa rin makita minsan. And you do not collaborate. It's, and, it's a survival instinct, yes. That's, and the, the, we saw this, no? Um, when we were in... Um, Resorts. So, wars again. Oh, yeah, yeah, Marawi. When, when we were, were in Marawi, Marawi, there were stories like um, when they were running away, uh, habang binabaril sila, merong isa na binuhat yung anak niya. And then when they got to the safe area, they realized hindi anak yung karga niya. It was kambing. a kambing. It was a goat. And then why? Again, yung sinasabi nila, Nay, isa pa. water, water bottle. Uh, sorry. Well, brand, my, my brand dead, my sponsor. <laughs> so it was a, it was a water uh, oh, container. Oh. And then, na um, na. again, when you panic, there is no logic there. You don't, you don't think. And yung stories na yan, it, it, that explains, no cognition. No cognition and talaga even when, even with one, um, when Resorts World happened, but there's a gunman that opened fire and shot so many people. And there was a person who said to me, Ma'am, I fell when I was running out of that place. And I heard my office mate screaming, Help, help. I didn't help. To Mayusha and ran as fast as she could. Why? Because her brain is in a threatened state. She could not think of saving someone else. She had to survive because she has an 11 year old child. So when the brain is in a threatened state, it will not understand. So yeah, the reminder for all of us parents, teachers, if you're a teacher, if you're a leader, if you're if you're talking to someone and they are free, feeling threatened, no matter what you explain, they will not understand it. Whether adult or child, they will not understand it. There's no cognition. There's no creativity, even if you ask them for a solution. Now, some people would say, eh, bakit siya, no? Mission impossible, di ba? Eh, siya yun eh. Trained po yung brain niya para maging ganon, di ba? Na makapag-create ng solution agad. But if you're not so trained and there is threat to it, then you cannot understand things. So, um, next slide. Next slide. Because you're also threatened a lot, sometimes it affects your immune system. It affects you and it makes you kalat-kalat, less efficient. It affects your behavior. Mainitin ang ulo mo in communication. 
And it also affects your long-term memory. Yung neurohormones in your brain that affects your long-term memory ay lagot. Kaya huwag kayo masyadong anxious. Huwag laging galit. Huwag laging nakathreatened ang brain natin when we are communicating. Relax the brain. How do you relax the brain? Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Breathing alerts the parasympathetic part of the brain, which stops the release of cortisol that makes you panic. So, breathing first, being mindful, being in the present, noticing that person's language, then breathing continuously. So, those are a couple of tips that I can give people who need to communicate. Breathe. It helps your brain and helps your communication. Next slide, please. Ayan, mabilis na. Last few na lang. Last few minutes. Um, so if your brain is in an emotional hijack, sometimes you cannot think because all the blood and oxygen is in the feeling part of the brain. So let's avoid a emo an emotional hijack. Pause. Stop. Breathe. Pause. Think about what you're going to say. And that's what I do with my husband. Before I say anything, I think about it a hundred times because I don't want to regret it. I don't want to have to regret it. And um or tama ba? Karen na parang ano, when you are in that feeling part. Parang sige, I'll give my time. Uh, I'll give myself time to feel this. But yeah. I will not make decisions while I'm in this yes. state. Yes. Yes. Hindi natin sinasabing Mag bawal magfeel. Mag feel. Ah. Pwede kang magfeel. Embrace your emotions because this is important for self-nurture and self-care. The thing is, I care for myself first. Before I attack my husband. <laughs> Why? Because if I don't take care of myself first, my communication with him would be so bad. So I have to take care of my own emotions first. I think about things first. I process it first. Then I talk to him. Now, sometimes he helps me out. Sometimes we talk together. We communicate. And sometimes people would say, Paano naman yung transparency and authenticity? You can be authentic and still be kind. You know? Why? What? Whoever said that you can be authentic and be disrespectful, right? I think so, that's also important. Eh? The way you program each other in uh, communication, like uh, the both of us, no. Um, I think in this relationship, we have learned to make a standard of how we are going to discuss things, even we have if rules. it's even if it's emotional, diba? And a lot of these things, so emotional because it it deals with our kids, no? And mm -hmm. that's something we feel very passionate about. And um, there have been times that, you know, sometimes wala nang logic yung mga pinagsasabi namin. And we learned from that. And we told each other, okay, maybe next time we don't say those things or we don't say it that way. So we have formed a standard in our communication that's in this right. relationship. That's right. Next slide, please. Maybe we can fast track yes, na. Yes, kasi wala click, na oras. Click, click. Click executive brain, the logical brain. Now, we have many parts in the brain. Please don't make make the mistake of simplifying what I, everything that I'm saying and saying, oh, the brain is just like one mass. No. There is an emotional part of the brain. There is the language part. There's the sensory part. Many parts. But the executive brain is the prefrontal cortex. And in this part of the brain, it's the one in charge of analysis, thinking. And it also activates the parasympathetic part that stops you from getting so stressed. Now, the executive function of the brain, this is the last part of our brain that gets developed as human beings. And um, even in the evolution of people, uh, evolutionary um even in the evolution of of things the the logic is the last talaga to get developed like from the caveman days to us you know becoming more thinking individuals so this executive brain is the one that says ep, 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 teka lang. stop panicking you know there's a better way of saying that and i have trained this part of the brain for decades i mean i've been doing this for more than two decades so almost three decades of training this executive brain i've become a better communicator as opposed to just being an emotional communicator although if you hear my communication there's a lot of emotion there because <laughs> it's still you know making these two parts of the brain work together for a better result not just puro emotions lang without logic may flow yan meron pa rin yang ano rason meron ding rational yung communication so next slide how do we do this now better um as a reminder the brain moves away from threat so in communication how are you threatening 
in communication. How are your thoughts happening when you communicate that makes it threatening to other people? So we can change that. We can manage those thoughts. We can also manage how we communicate so it's less threatening. Next slide, please. How do we also make sure that we are more rewarding? Because if the brain moves away from threat, it moves towards reward. So are you visually rewarding? Are you auditorily rewarding? Are you kinesthetically rewarding? Based on the five senses, di ba, minsan pagka dumadaan yung asawa ko, bango! So rewarding! Makes me want to go to him because it is so rewarding. So how do you now do this? Can we click on the next slide? What we need to do is to increase the rewards in communication and lessen the threats. Making things more familiar for the brain will lessen the threats. Um, being able to make your uh, presentation or your communication important for that person is going to increase the reward also. Uh, training yourself to be more um, to be more eloquent in communication will make your communication more rewarding. Um, lessening the distractions will also make make your communication more rewarding rather than threatening. So, um, or al also lessening the distractions around, di ba? Yep. Like, kunyari, when a <clears throat> child studies, as ang dami-daming TV, and dami-daming cell phone, Toys. and daming gadgets, di ba? So, then the distract talaga yan. Make it an environment that can help um, induce that kind of communication and better communication at that with less distractions. So, the last few things that I just we just want to share with you is this. Click on the next slide, please. Based on NLP, you can change what? Again, uh, we discussed about impact. We discussed about the brain. And we discussed about connection. So to be able to connect, uh, it's good to have a good, uh, like really great impact. And how to do that is through the brain. And it differs from one person to another. So the way you communicate should be customized for every person change the way you think change words instead of saying things like you know i'm stressed we always say this in training i'm stretched instead of saying i'm having a bad day you can say i'm having an amazingly challenging day <laughs> or i'm learning something from from today so changing the language would be very important today is making me stronger <laughs> today is making me stronger today who is making me so strong and programming change the way you're doing things if you're slouched straighten your shoulders if you talk using a very soft voice try making it louder just try changing what you are doing and in the end you are 100 percent responsible for your communication 100 percent and if you guys want to learn more, we have a, um, a master class here on ESME. It's called Empowering Relationships. Please uh, enroll uh, in that and let us know. Our um, Facebook, our Instagram uh, mm -hmm. handles are there. Yes, so, you can follow us, Carol yes, Herrera. Follow us. Our, our Herrera on Instagram. You can follow us also on Facebook. You can also follow Train Station Philippines if you have more inquiries as well on what we're talking about. Or you so, can also get in touch with Esme. Yes, of course. Of course. Esme, our partner. Thank you so much for having us today. So a lot of people think that once you've communicated, you've done the job. No, you really have to make sure that you become flexible in your communication so that it can empower and influence and motivate others. So there you go. That's it. Eleven o'clock. Pizza. Pizza and Nico. Nico, are you there? Yes, pa. Hello. There you go. Yes. Salamat kaayo. Dalday namin no. Hello, Gonzo. Salamat kaayo. Actually, Pete said I were talking for in the background, yeah, but that we love your energy so much, <laughs> and your talk was so relatable, then po. <laughs> Thank you. Po. And dami ko na pong um, dami ko na pong notes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. yes, yun, and... no? You get to learn with your job. I know, I know. Yes, po. very, very grateful po for this. And we're really, really happy to have you here. Po. Sobrang um, umaga pa lang. Ang dami ng food for the brain. <laughs> Thank know, you. Po. Right? Thank you po so yeah. much. So, Thank you do we still have time for questions? I uh, I mean, it's up to you. Sure. If the people are still here, we could do questions. If if not, I don't know. It depends on you guys. Maybe we could ask like a few questions. Sure. So, sure. Like, so we since we have prepared a set of questions, po, um, our first question po is, can culture, gender, nationality, or social class have an effect on effective communication? Po? Yes. For sure. Um, I was just uh, discussing this with my son the other day. No? Na parang the 
in other countries, like Tayo, when we say us, like me, we point to ourselves, right? In Japan, you point here, me. <laughs> Dun pa lang, kito, may difference agad yan. And the way uh, we talk is also uh, very important. Ito yung classic story. We were, when we were in uh, Singapore, ako naman, para, excuse me, uh, where is the Mong Kok Night Market? Sabi nung nila, wah! Saya kata, Mong Kok Night Market, Singapore tu lagi, Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Uh, Mong Kok Night Market, wah, sampai ni kan, ini tu, ini Mong- turun natin tu eh, eto, oh, go, Mong Kok Night Market lah, gaya macam apa cerita, so sampai nung, where Mong Kok Night Market, sampai nung, ano, sampai nung, tindak, ah, deh, 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 apa deh, apa apa deh, 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 apa Uh, they speak English. Yeah. And it's yes. normal for them. It's relatable and sila Mong- nagkaintindihan. Pagkakasabi right? mo kasi, Mong Kok Night's uh-huh. Market. Eh, di ba pag nasa yung bansa ka naman, feeling mo naman, di ba? Dapat medyo slap slap or ganyan. Uh, again, program of Filipinos, when we speak uh, English, it's very American, right? Yes. So, yes. ano naman, slang slang pa akong ganyan. <laughs> so yes, it can affect. Noted po yan, pag pumunta po ako dun. <laughs> Pwede na mag-travel. Oh, oh, oh. Yes po. Oh, and saka okay. lang, when, in, in Vietnam, when we're doing our training, yes. we do a lot of international training. So, in Vietnam, what learning? Yeah. What learning did you get? As in, ganon. And, and they don't get insulted with that because that's how they talk. I learned that day, but when you think, when you think about things, you, you feel like they, they, So, that's how you feel, right? Like, when you think about these things, hindi ko mamaliin yung English ko, but I try to, you know, talk, sound like sound them. Like them. It's almost like saying, diba? it's almost like um, when a foreigner or when a, uh, a Caucasian guy tries to speak Tagalog, ano reaction natin? Tayo parang, wow, uy, galing, diba? Natutuwa tayo. Yes. Why? I think it's, uh, we think of it as respect. And it's the same way also. And when we adjust our communication, yeah. it's almost the same thing. Na parang, uy, we're respecting. That's just, why we are adjusting our communication. Just like baby talking. Oh, yeah. Diba? Pag, uh, we have a two-year-old. Ano, baby? Nabubo ang baby ko. Yan, yan. Yeah. Oh, that's the way you talk. Or they don't understand. Like, for example, she hits. She hits. And we have to train her, right? And and help her. So, I, I ask questions that she can relate with. Like, does Jasmine hit? Does Belle hit? Does Cinderella hit? You know? That's are something. you a princess? Are you a princess? Or are you the beast? You know? Are you... Are, <laughs> sula ginagit nung ko siya parang alam niya kasi alam mo sabi ko sa kanya na you know that when you hurt hurt people hurt others ah, ano magigising ito 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 <laughs> okay, but for the second question, has the development of the internet and social media caused a change in the way we communicate today? Isa pang layer yan. Probably another session yan because yes, it has. It has greatly affected, especially and social anxiety has been greatly affected because of social media. It has affected us in a very good way though. Yun nga, I, would, I was about to say, dalawa naman yan. Because kung before, ang input sa utak natin, sa brains natin, na ito lang ang way of communicating or this is a, a good father, for example, ito lang, very limited. Because mm-hmm. of internet or because of uh, uh, social media, we get more input and we get more options. Like, oh, I want to be that kind of father. I want to be that kind of communicator. I want to be that kind of boss. We had more access. We have yes. more access now. We have more access. So yes, it has affected us both in good and bad ways. Yeah. Okay, po. Uh, so... I like uh, the next question. May, may pinadala ka kasi I want to answer that. You, yes, about- po. I was about to ask the next question, actually. Since you were talking about... Po, uh, Oh, no, wala po si Tisa. Anyways, um, lang siya, hindi lang natin nakikita. <laughs> since you were talking about po about the neuro-linguistic programming, a lot of people are having misconceptions din po. Is it a type of hypnosis or what is it? Uh, NLP kasi is utilized in different methodologies and there are language patterns in NLP that can be used to put people in uh, a sense of hypnosis or trance, but not really the, look at this, you will be hypnotized. It's not like that. <laughs> kasi, NLP uh, was formed uh, because of, look, parang there are different types of um, disciplines. No? There's hypnosis, there's uh, 
it's a tier also. Cognitive, there is a, a tier, cognitive behavior cognitive therapy. Cognitive behavior yeah. therapy. And what NLP did was what works in these um, um, disciplines, they put it together. Yeah. And hypnosis is like a part Mil of that. Milton so Erickson. Yeah. NLP uses hypnosis as a tool sometimes in some of the patterns. And it's not just hypnosis. Yeah. And I, I, it has been utilized the wrong way in many, many ways. It started back in the 1970s. And there were a lot of people who started using NLP because of the language and the programming part in, you know, um, unethical things. And that's why RRNI are licensed and certified in new code, which is the ethical side of NLP. I mean, if you have such great power to motivate and influence and persuade someone, why use it for Buddha? Boodle. Why not change the world? Why not heal the world? Why not yeah. make the world a better place? Yes. Yeah. So why not do that instead, right? So, um, and people will sometimes say to me, oh, I have this power. I can bend the spoon. And I'm like, wow, you have such brain power. Use it to change the world, not bend the spoon. So, although it's good for entertainment. I love it, actually. <laughs> when, we, uh, when we train under the founder um, of NLP, what he said was, you know, if it's not with a good intention, it's not really NLP. So actually, one of our classmates asked that. Um, so a lot of people in NLP have been using it to control their mind and bend a spoon. So why don't you teach us how to do that? And why don't you do that? And he's like, what for? <laughs> so it's like, what for? For what intention? <laughs> so I love, I love the founder of NLP, Dr. John Grinder. And um it has been called a pseudoscience for so many years because it was in the 70s that it was discovered by two guys who are such mavericks. They're like, alam mo yon, very hippie, very um, different in the way that they think. When the way that people were doing health counseling and therapy were very traditional, they were doing lobotomy, they were doing um, elect yun, yung electroshock. electroshock therapy, they were doing those things. So these two guys decided to do it. What if it's, there's no medication? What if there's no electroshock therapy? What if there's no ganito? What can be done? Can work actually happen? And in the years, like in the past two decades, the surge of the studies and the proof coming up out because of neuroscience showed the evidence of how this thing that's been there for so many years, for four decades, actually worked. ng backing. That's why when I'm talking to you about um, the brain, the emotional brain, the reptilian brain, that supports the unconscious signals we have in our bodies that are talked about in NLP. Or why why is it that when we speak, we feel better? Because the blood and oxygen in our brain from the limbic goes to the temporal lobes, the language part of the brain. So when when they said language programs you and makes you feel better, and it, it, it is actually supported and backed by science. So when people debunk it or say that it is, for example, a myth or something that is, you know, who are the bayan pseudoscience? You know what I did? I studied more about it because... Um, I studied more, na kahit na hindi NLP, I studied applied neuroscience to, sh to get proof. Because I think, like, it, as, a, as a metaphor, when my faith was being questioned, I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know anybody anybody's faith. But when your faith is questioned, you don't say, ah, hindi na lang ako maniniwala. What you do is you study. You learn more about it so that it supports you. It helps that you think. And thank you for people who think. Because now... When I am questioned about what I do, I am studying further and knowing more. And like when it comes again to my faith or when it comes to um, God, you know, it's an informed decision for me to believe. Well, with me, um, I, I don't really care more. Uh, I don't really care about yung, if it works or and pseudoscience. For me, again, I've used it. And especially when I coach... Um, uh, suicidal people, uh, from people who experienced trauma uh, in Yolanda, in uh, Marawi, in Resorts World. We were there, and this is what I used, and it worked tremendously. And for me, parang that's, since it that's worked, you know, um, that's 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 enough for me. The founders, kasi, were kind of lazy. Sorry, but I I love John <laughs> Render. They don't like putting things on paper. And they don't like, because how you measure things, that's why in science, you have to have a baseline. You have to have the same 
um, control group, you have to introduce the same kind of treatment and come up with certain results. With NLP, kasi, because of flexibility, you don't have the same control group. Trauma pa lang, iba-iba yung trauma eh. When you talk about now introduction of a treatment, iba-iba rin ang treatment. So how do you create a baseline? So it was kind of tough. But there were a lot of studies, again, that shows mirroring, which is what is used in NLP, um, the visual, auditory, kinesthetic learners. You know, that's There's already proof of that. So uh, a lot of things on NLP are already proven by science. Um, there are things not proven yet like for example the eye access which is reading the eyes of a person um that is very nlp that is not yet debunked although not also proven so there's no data yet there's no data to, enough to, data yet so we don't it. also talk about it that much we, we only propagate adjusting and flexibility and the other things that are already proven Hello po. Okay. So very sorry po about my internet connection. <laughs> but the new normal. <laughs> I mean, my question, there's a very good question now. Uh, what are your advice or tips in allowing child watching YouTube and other <laughs> social media? How old? How old ba? Hindi. May, may age ba? Kasi ako yun yung sagot ko. It would, it, it would be on the age. Kasi di ba... Um, there are different studies that below, you know, seven or six years old, if as much as possible. Below two years old, no screen time. Our, our pediatrician was telling us that. Uh, but kasi kami, as parents, we cannot stop also technology because there's also information there. Like what we're doing right now, right? I mean, if... if um, hindi talaga nakakatulong, why are we doing this? Yeah. And there are some programs on YouTube that also that helpful. like yesterday my son was watching Brightside and then during dinner he was like dad did you know that this 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 and I'm like okay wow where'd you get that nagulat ako yeah. kasi parang factual siya may baka sinasabi na rin siya nakaka-nosebleed ng mga terms where'd you get that I was watching Brightside on YouTube yesterday I was like oh good job mm -hmm. <laughs> so I yun yeah again ex something basta in excess I think uh, that's uh, also not good limit screen time uh, Limit the screen time. below seven years old. Yeah, yeah. So um, above seven, but below seven years old, limit the screen time. You can make it as a reward. You can make it even as a threat. <laughs> no YouTube if you do not follow. <laughs> Ako naman, ano, um, it, it's good to have screen time. Uh, again, ano siya, no? uh, supervised sana. The kind of shows that you allow your kids to watch. Because it's input. That yes. is a programming. They can vicariously experience violence. They can vicariously experience trauma because of what they're watching. So you have to be mindful. And especially kids below seven years old, they don't know what's real or not yeah. yet. So whatever they watch on TV, they think it's a normal way of doing things and they might do it to their yaya, to their parents, to their uh, uh, other kids and we need to be able to process that and say oh that is just uh, a movie and they're just acting that's not real yeah yes i so hope that answered your question that jetro okay for our last question po um how can we like mga uh, kami po na viewers and those who want to practice neurolinguistic programming uh, with ourselves lang po, ganyan, like how do we Start or how do we practice it at home or alone? Mm, naka, napakarami dyan pa lang, no? Ako, um, uh, sa programming part, let's start with the programming part. Um, John Grinder, the founder of NLP, would always tell us, try something new so that it can create a different neural pathway in your brain. Always, you know, whatever it is. Um, try something new because your brain also wants to forage. It wants to seek new information. So try that out. Um, in terms of language, always try to revert your language into a positive. So not hindi yung, bawal lang nega, hindi yung ganong language, but language that is like, what am I learning from this? What is this teaching me? In any situation, if it is tough, just ask yourself that simple question. What am I learning from this? What is this teaching me? Another thing is, is there a positive way of saying this? Is there a better way of saying this? So if someone says to me, I'm really bad at math. I'm very, you know, I'm bobo with math. You know, I just don't know how to do math yet. I'm not that confident in math yet. So changing that into a positive is better than saying, I talaga, hindi ko, hindi talaga alam yan. It trains your brain to see 
that it is not such a threat. And then um, you can also change your words like um, instead of saying, I am afraid, you, you can say, I need to learn how to be brave. So uh, it already gives you the reward of what you would want to aspire for. When it comes to the neural, ako, honestly, mindfulness, breathing, breathing exercises have helped me a lot. It has lowered my anxiety. It has tempered my ADHD. Um, it has trained my brain in so many ways just by breathing, feeling your the air go through your upper lips, up to your nostrils, filling your lungs, and then breathing out, doing that three times, being mindful of my environment. I, I notice the things that I see, I feel, and I hear to bring me to the present because it helps me instead of being anxious in communicating. You. Sabi mo lahat, but ako siguro, alahad lang, experiment. You know, um, you know, it's becoming aware of um, the effects, the cause and the effects of things. If I do it this way, what will be the effect? If I say it this way, what will be the effect? And eventually you will find uh, a, a good way of doing things, of mm -hmm. cert doing certain things, not just in communication. Mm -hmm. right? Can we still address this one? Oh, medyo interesting yung ano eh. So since we are talking about communication, Communication here. Can I ask this question? How important is communication in a workplace? Oh, <laughs> it's very, very important. Very, very important. <laughs> um, sure, because you know it's not just relationships. No, uh, there are relationships in the workplace, but there are also financial uh, effects of these misunderstandings or miscommunication. Mm -hmm. So it is very important. If you don't communicate, how can you sell? Number one, if you cannot communicate, how can you lead a team? If you cannot communicate, how can you work with a team? How can you motivate? How can you motivate the team? If you cannot communicate, how can you um, troubleshoot a problem? How can you fix what is wrong? If there is miscommunication, problems escalate. Customers become unhappy. Stakeholders become unhappy. Um, leadership gets you know overwhelmed and confused and not knowing what to do. Um, people leave. So, and if you, it's the lifeline. Yes, yes. yes. God's just saying it is the lifeline, and it is our lifeline in our everyday, not just in our families, but even at work. So, right now, because everything is online, we have to be more connected with everyone else in our team even if it is online. We can relate it to it so much because kami po ni Nico yung finance admin as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nakangiti talaga ako kay Nico, di ba Nico? <laughs> yeah, yes. we were like talking about in the background for like everything. Like, oh my God, nakaka-relate talaga yung talk nila. <laughs> and like, like, you know that this topic you're, that you're talking about with communication is really important nowadays then as well since mm -hmm. We're really cut off with society and because of like COVID and all. So really, really thank you both for this wonderful topic and wonderful webinar. Really, really learned a lot from your PowerPoint presentation and everything that you have talked about today. So before we end for the webinar, do you have anything that you want to plug or anything that you want to add on for our mm -hmm. webinar book? Yes, we would like everyone to please follow us. Uh, go to our social media. And if you can, please um, visit trainstation.com.ph because we also have our programs there that we have available. We have a couple of public programs with you, with Esme, of course. So we would like to plug that. And we, Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah. And 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 yeah. We have uh, programs on uh, mental health. Yeah on leadership, managing anxiety, I think we, we would have that. Um, and we also have uh, a public program coming this May um, with train station. So we would like to um, encourage everyone to just follow us on social media so that you get the the invites or the alert for those uh, programs that we would have. And of course, uh, we'd like to invite everyone to enroll in our masterclass here on ESME. It's called Empowering Relationships. And that is very exciting as well. Yeah. So we will be there for, for sure. Definitely, we will be there to support. Hindi po kami mawawala ni Nico. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you also for, for those of you who have other questions, you can just message us on social media or we can respond to this thread after because I think we run out of time. So thank you so much. Thank and you God so much. Bless you. 
Thank you, Paul. We're so grateful to have you this morning, this very lovely morning. Okay, so um, for everyone who attended this webinar, all of you can get a digital certificate of your attendance. So for sure, you want to get yours. If so, just head on to our website. Again, that's www.asme.ph or click on the link that we posted in the comment section below. And you can put your comments for guys. Mr. Car uh, Mr. RR and Mrs. Carell will still be answering your comments. Okay, so um, we want you to make your own comment. Uh, your, your own account and navigate to the title of the webinar that you joined in today. So once again, as this webinar comes to a close, I would like to invite everyone who wants to learn more and increase their knowledge and skills. Just visit our website at www.esme.ph. That is www.esme.ph. <laughs> We offer a wide range of masterclass courses, including our live le webinar series and our masterclasses, those of which you can enroll in what, whatever is relevant to your passion, career, and interests. So we hope to see you in our webinars, in our future webinars and masterclasses in the future. So once again, po, thank you for spending your time with us, Mr. RR and Ms. Karel. Sure. It's truly a time well spent when you're able to gain something useful and beneficial. So once again, my name is Nico Po. And I am Pizza of Esme Philippines. It, Philippines, it has been a pleasure hosting for your learning today. Thank you. Have Bye. a great day, Po. Have a great day, everyone. See you soon, Po. See you.